Hi guys, my name is Alex and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. In this one we'll be looking at Blender's new node groups which can be used to set up advanced materials in seconds. Okay, so if we take a look at the example I've got here, you can see I have a nice wooden material made up of many nodes and what I want to do is make another wood material without needing to completely remake the material I've already got and apply it to this sphere. To do this I'm going to use node groups. So if I take a look at the nodes I already have, I can select the nodes I want simply by pressing B and clicking and dragging a box around them and once they're selected I can press Ctrl G to make a group. Alright so if we take a look at this group now you can see we've got two new nodes. We've got the group input and we've got the group output and these control the inputs and outputs on the group. So if we press tab we can go in and out of the group and as you can see this group like every other node has got inputs and outputs which like I said before are being controlled by the group input and group output. So this group will work perfectly fine as it is but it needs to be optimized for it to be easier to use. So if we press N we can bring up this uh, window here and under the interface panel we can change the name of the sockets in the input and output nodes. So the top one will be called specularity, uh, the second one will be called diffuse and the third one will be displacement. So the reason why I'm doing this is because now I can easily see which textures are supposed to go into the sockets. Now as you can probably notice I haven't actually renamed the last two because the normal is going into both of them which isn't necessary. So before I bother renaming them I need to delete one of them by clicking on it up here and then clicking on this X and then I can use the other one to replace it where it was going. And now I can rename this one to normal. Uh, on the other side on the output we can simply call the first socket surface and the second one uh, displacement. Alright now this is good but there's still a little bit more we can do. Uh, we really need a few more inputs to give us more control over what's happening inside the group. So I'm going to get this, uh, this value here and put it into the input and rename this to uh, displacement strength. And then I can get this value and put it into another empty socket and call this one uh, the normal strength. Okay, so now as you can see, if we leave the group, uh, we have these two new values which we can change, you know, like you would change any other value, and they're going to make an effect onto the material. So you can see if I increase the displacement strength, you can see these crevices in the wood are getting stronger, but that's far too powerful, so I'm going to leave it at 0 0.6. So the last thing we can do is in the same window we had earlier, which we bring up by pressing N, we can change the name, label, and properties to wood. So if we do that now, you can see that the group is now called wood at the top, and this little property in here is called wood as well. Okay, so now we can put this onto the sphere. So to do this, we simply need to select the sphere, go into its materials, and to add the group in, we simply press Shift A like you'd add any other node, go down to group, and then click on wood. And the group is now in this material. So now all we have to do is connect the relevant textures to their sockets, like so, and connect the outputs uh, to the material output and now if we take a look you can see we set up a new advanced material in seconds. Okay so now that that's done what we can do is use this node group across not only this blender file but across every blender file that we can work on. So let's move across to another file where I want a similar wood material to be put on and we can use this group to help us. Okay so as you can see I have this cube and it's got a material called wood and I've got all the textures and I've unwrapped it and everything. All it needs now is the actual nodes which are in the node group in the other file. So to bring in the node group we simply go to file and then we have two options we have link or append. 
Now, linking it would mean that if we were to open up the group and change some of the nodes inside the group, then it would change it in the other files as well. So all I'm going to do is append it so I can make as many changes as I like without needing to worry about my other files. So after we click on append, all we need to do is go along to the wood file and then click on it and then you'll notice that we have folders inside the file. So now if we go to node tree, we can simply add in the wood uh, material not a group even. So once it's been linked in, you might expect it to just appear in the middle here, but that's not how it works. All you have to do is add it in. So press shift A, go down to group, and then choose the wood group. And now just like earlier, we can put in all of our uh, you know, textures and then connect it to the surface and displacement. And now this cube has got a wood material on it. Okay, so node groups don't just work in the uh, materials, they also work in the compositor. So if I were to render this and go over to the compositor by pressing control left arrow, what I can do is I can click use nodes, have it show a backdrop, then add in a viewer node and connect it so I can see what I'm doing. And what I can do is I can use another node group, which I already have. So if I go to file and append, I can use my glow node group, which is meant for the compositor and not materials. And I can simply add in the glow like so and have the image come in and out. And if we look into the node group, all it is, is just a couple of blurs, well, a blur adding on to the original image. And there you go. So that's another easy thing you can do with node groups just if you have an effect that you use all the time in the compositor just put it into a node group and import it into your new files okay so that pretty much wraps things up for this tutorial i'm hoping you learned something about uh, setting up node groups and using them uh, to quickly get the effects you're wanting so thanks for watching and goodbye